it's a big industry, but it's a small industry, mm-hmm. and um, reputation is everything. Wouldn't want to be in the news for the wrong reasons right. uh, due to an outbreak. <laughs> Okay, well, welcome back, folks. Uh, my name is Lionel Johnson with Bison Transport, and I'm sitting here with uh, Blair, who will uh, introduce himself in just one uh, moment here. But we're going to be sitting down to talk today about the Food Safety Modernization Act and really look at it from a shipper's perspective. What uh, is important to, to know? Where is the act at? And how can that impact uh, an individual shipper? And where does a carrier like Bison uh, come into play? So, Blair, if we could just have you introduce uh, yourself, say who you, know, who you are and, and what you do at Bison. Thanks, Lionel. Uh, my name is Blair Scott. I'm the uh, Director of Refrigerator Operations here at Bison. Okay, great. Well, thank you very much for spending some time with us this afternoon here. So we're going to talk about the the Food Safety Modernization Act, and I've got a quote here that that calls it uh, one of the most sweeping reforms to food safety laws in more than 70 years. It was signed into law by uh, President Obama back actually in 2011, and it aims to ensure that the U.S. food supply is safe by shifting the focus from responding to contamination to uh, preventing it actually. So if we just look at this act in layman's terms, Blair, how, how would you actually describe it? So for a shipper that may be new to this, what do they need to know and, and what is this act all about? Yeah, so the biggest uh, goal of the act is to uh, you know, take a reactive measure out of the food chain, for instance, a foodborne illness, and then you know, tracing it back to the source to put controls in front of that to prevent that foodborne illness or other contaminant from entering the food chain. From a shipper standpoint, They need to make sure the production facility is sanitized. They also need to ensure that the supply chain is sanitized all the way through to the final destination. So that includes the loading, the transportation, and even on the receiving end. Okay, so to be clear then, all of the people that are touching the product along the supply chain, ultimately it's the shipper's responsibility to make sure that all of their suppliers are ensuring, you know, I guess, uh, proper custody of the product. I'm not, I'm not sure how you phrase that. But. Yeah, it all, it all boils back to the shipper. Um, the shipper is responsible to hold others accountable to it. Uh, the FDA, in fact, is uh, moving from a regulatory body to an enforcement body. Okay. Uh, so they can levy fines, they can do plant shutdowns. And, um, you know, ultimately, the shipper will be the first one they look at when something happens. Okay. Oh, very interesting. So, you know, we, we spoke briefly at the beginning of this that the law came about, uh, you know, a number of years ago. Is it fully in, in effect right now or is it being transitioned in? What, you know, what is the status currently? Yeah, so there's, uh, there's different levels of uh, implementation of the law. We're in, we're in a, uh, I guess, a period of forgiveness right now or trial and error, if you will. And, uh, it's being applied uh, based on company size. So uh, certainly the largest producers would be the first, uh, medium-sized producers second, and then your smaller producers uh, following that. Uh, they're also uh, revising different groups that would be exempt from the act due to other regulations. I know some uh, produce uh, shippers or produce uh, haulers are, are exempt due to current FDA rules. Okay, so there's some other some other act or regulations, legislation in, in force that yes. uh, impacting their business. Yeah. Okay, so how does this uh, <coughs> act impact Canadian uh, shippers or, or producers? Is it only impacting the U.S. producers, or how, how does that work? If you want to do business in the U.S., meaning if your products are ultimately going to be con- consumed in the U.S., uh, whether you're from an importer, you know, such as Canada or anywhere else. Uh, you need to follow the guidelines. Uh, you know, if you're if you're going in transit uh, into Mexico or something, uh, that act itself won't apply. But anything that is going to be consumed or used in the U.S. is uh, uh, is required to be part of this act. Okay, so this this topic is very important for all of the Canadian producers and, and shippers as well, if they are looking down to the, the United States. Yeah, right. absolutely. And um, you know, this act is good. It's probably long overdue, and uh, uh, the expectation right now is that uh, Canada will implement a similar act, the the Safe Food for Canadians Act, okay. um, down the road after this is off and rolling, uh, because certainly a, a safe food chain is, is important to everyone. Uh, you look at the the uh, health costs battling something like that, and uh, it's, you know why not? front load it and mm-hmm. prevent it from occurring as opposing to fixing it and 
trying to prevent it again. Okay. Interesting. Well, uh, you know, I, I would assume the, the number one goal, of, of course, of, the, of this is to protect the supply chain. But I, I would think in today's world with the growth of social media and how connected people are, you know, companies that have infractions or, or have product recalls or, or, or have challenges, it's probably even more damaging than it would have been in the past because so many people can find out about it so quickly. You know, have you have you seen that uh, in uh, your role at all? We have. It's uh, unfortunately, uh, you know, um, it's a it's a big industry, but it's a small industry, mm-hmm. and um, you know, reputation is everything. You know, from from safety or or performance, otherwise, and uh, this is no exception. Uh, you certainly wouldn't want to be in the news for the wrong reasons right. uh, due to an outbreak. So looking at shippers and, and understanding that the responsibility is, is resting on, on their shoulders, is it possible you know, in the year or years ahead where certain shippers may not be complying with the act, would they have challenged securing capacity from companies like uh, Abizen Transport or other carriers? Yeah, I believe so. You know, if a, if a shipper is not putting the investment in, in their people or resources to, you know, become compliant with changing acts. Um, you know, likely, you know, the carriers they choose and some of the other supply chain decisions they may might not uh, be to that as well. Um, okay. I expect that, uh, you know, carriers that are either compliant or become compliant with the uh, shippers requirements uh, will certainly have the upper hand in the early years uh, as this act is in place. Okay. Uh, what do you see in, in terms of shippers in, in general? Do are, are most shippers very familiar with this act and, and actively you know making changes, or would you say most are, are less familiar with what is required of them and, and really aren't sure what the path is moving yeah. forward? So a lot of shippers would be familiar with HACCP rules. It's it's typically the the standard around food safety. Uh, now the uh, FSMA is a, is a little bit different. In, in the fact that uh, it takes a lot of components of HACCP, but it also you know, puts preventive control rules in place and such as, such things as that. Um, you know, your larger shippers that rely heavily on the U.S. market um, may not be completely up to speed on it now, but they've certainly heard it and, and I'm sure the wheels are in motion. Work, yeah. um, on the other hand, um, you know, there's a lot of shippers that are likely waiting to see how it pans out and how it's going to affect them and, and probably a few steps behind the progress where they should be. I see. Okay. Where does Bison fit in on in all of this and, and how can a carrier like Bison help out uh, with this situation with, with shippers? Understanding the, uh, the scope of the need and you know the amount of cross-border business we do today, uh, we've taken it upon ourselves to develop a, a Bison type plan that, you know, takes our already solid controls and just shifts it geared more towards the uh, Food Safety Act. And what we can do then is if we encounter a shipper who you know may not be quite compliant with the act uh, by creating their own plan or may have some unanswered questions, well, what we can offer them is, is our solution that they can either you know incorporate or else use it as a guideline to develop their own. Okay, so we'd be able to roll in and, and help them out uh, in whatever capacity may be needed there. Yeah, yeah. the biggest uh, the biggest thing, um, like I said, you know, even in the case of Bison, where we have a, a lot of great processes in place, the Food Safety Act has been uh, referred to as the Documentation Act as okay. well, uh, <laughs> because it's you know not only having the great controls in place, but having the process documented and the ability to prove it when uh, when necessary. Okay, oh, that, that, that's great to know about. So looking at a shipper then from their perspective, if they are working with a, a carrier like Bison or, or other carriers across Canada and, and the U.S., are there certain questions that the shipper should ask of the carrier to make sure that the carrier can fulfill their needs and make sure that they stay compliant with this act? Yeah, there's a, there's a few specific ones that come to mind. Uh, First and foremost is the ability to uh, prove temperature. Um, the act requires that you uh, retain temperature records uh, up to one year following the delivery. Okay. So, uh, you know, certainly a, a telematics solution where you're capturing that real-time data is, is key. It's part of our standard procedure. 
Um, so that's uh, certainly something they're going to want to look for. Uh, secondly, um, there's a, a, a large focus on trailer sanitation. Uh, you know, you can do everything right. However, if you, you know, load something on a contaminated trailer, it, it could cause a lot of problems. So, you know, having a, a specific wash program, you know, including the proof of wash, uh, the materials used in the wash, and uh, again, a documented process surrounding that. And uh, third is just, uh, you know, trailer vintage. Uh, the shipper can dictate the type of equipment, you know, spec and all, okay. uh, to what their products can move on. Um, you know, fortunately, our fleet is uh, very modern. Uh, you know, 80% of our fleet is 2015 and newer. Okay. Uh, we take food safety uh, in mind when we spec our equipment, so we're using the uh, proper materials already. Uh, procedures with uh, pre-cooling, uh, certainly the uh, temp integrity throughout the load and, and the sanitation. So okay. those, uh, those factors are, are going to be probably the top of the list when a shipper is uh, looking for a reliable carrier to get their product to the destination. The uh, solution to uh, a dirty trailer back in the day is, is give it an acid wash. Okay. Well, an acid wash, in fact, corrodes the floor, which creates pockets for bacteria to grow okay. in. So the act uh, insists that, you, you know, you can't beat warm water and soap. Um, to keep the integrity of your mm. equipment. So mm -hmm. yeah, it could be shiny and, and smell really nice, but in fact, it could be full of bacteria that could affect the uh, food chain. Oh, interesting, okay. Now, you had mentioned the term telematics. So what can you, you know, t tell us about how that operates at, at Bison? What are, what are we actually able to see here? Yeah, so our, uh, our telematics program uh, enables us to have uh, real-time temperature monitoring of, of the load. You know, the, the value in that is if, if a temperature changes while we're rolling down the road, our monitoring team would pick up on that and be able to begin to troubleshoot the issue. You know, whether it's uh, you know alarm that requires maintenance, maybe it just requires a, uh, a temperature adjustment due to inclement weather. Um, but we have, we have the ability to, to watch these and react real time. Uh, you know, we also have the ability to uh, provide the customer proof of temperature when required. Um, either by downloading the physical unit or in absence of that, we can pull a report through a telematics solution. It, it seems like a, a company or a, a carrier that if they aren't investing in technology and processes and their equipment, dealing with food producers is really going to be a, a non-issue in, in the, the next couple of years to come. Is they, they just won't be set up to handle that type of business. Is, is that correct? Yeah, they, uh, they're either going to shrink their available market or uh, be forced by hand to uh, invest in new equipment purchases, you know, and with the, you know, current exchange, uh, buying a, a brand new fleet uh, due to a change in regulations uh, may be too much for some carriers where they'll choose to either run domestic or, or shift their market to uh, handle, you know, protective service but on non-food related materials. Okay, great. Okay, well, just to, to wrap things up then, Blair, you know, there, this is quite a complicated uh, topic and, and there's lots of ins and outs to the act. Again, from a shipper's perspective, if there's one thing that they should take away or one thing that they should know, what do you, th what do you think is the most important thing for them to, to either ask about or, or be concerned about or, or know more about um, based on this act? Best thing I can suggest is, you know, talk to your carrier. Um, understand their capabilities to make sure they they understand the shippers program uh, choose your carriers wisely uh, you can do everything right from the manufacturing perspective uh, only to have the whole process go to waste from point A to point B because uh, you know the, the carrier you partnered with uh, is not compliant and not following the same standard Okay, great. Well, thank you very much. Well, I really appreciate your time this afternoon. It was quite uh, interesting and, and enlightening to learn more about this area of the business here. And for everyone watching uh, at, at home or, or wherever you may happen to be here, if you do have any questions that you would like for us to be able to address, please uh, just put them in the, the comments below. Otherwise, please feel free to go to bisontransport.com to be able to find out more about what Bison Transport uh, can do for your company. But thank you very much for tuning in today. And thank you again, Blair, for your time this afternoon. Thanks, Lionel. Thank you.